Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We're kind of jumping back into the vein of our Moon Lab project today, and of course now that we've got the uh, landing set up for the Moon Lab itself figured out, we need to figure out a way to bring three crew down to the surface uh, for what will be an extended stay. So uh, we've unlocked this new lander can. It is a three-person lander can. And um, judging by the weight and the mass of it, it's actually a little bit lighter than kind of the uh, the two crew lander can and the one crew land. Well, not as much as the one crew lander can, but uh, it has some advantages in that it, it's a little bit lighter. Um, obviously, not rated for any kind of atmospheric anything. So when we start thinking about putting a larger crew down on the surface of Mars for an extended period of time, we'll obviously have to rethink this design. But uh, according to Mechjeb, here on the moon, we can get this off the surface very comfortably with just a single lunar ascent engine, which I think was uh, kind of the plan all along. And uh, RCS Build A doesn't like anything that's happening here. Not even, not even a little bit. We're getting, yeah, which just seems like massive uh, discrepancies, and it's all very interesting. And at some point, I just said, okay, well. I've dealt with worse. I'm going to continue to deal with it. But uh, we need a little bit more Delta V just to kind of give us some uh, room to breathe. So we're going to put on some uh, tinier tanks here. These are basically going to be our reserve tanks uh, that we're going to use uh, just in case our primary tank um, gets emptied. Or yeah, if we need to for docking, that's our reserve fuel. So uh, all in all, our Delta V figures look uh, good enough to get us off to the moon are off the surface of the moon and back into orbit to rendezvous with uh, an Artemis craft that we'll, we, we will leave parked there. So uh, now we just need to build out our descent stage. Um, nothing truly creative here. Uh, kind of the, the form factor of tanks and the engines required don't leave us a whole lot of room to uh, be extra creative in our design, or at least not in ways that I've really thought of yet. So we'll be kind of approaching this in a very similar design philosophy as uh, previous landers, just uh, on a slightly bigger scale. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I've got uh, no engine choices for our ascent engine. I think I'd figured that out before. Anyway, and uh, this is the lunar module descent engine, so we're kind of sticking with uh, historically accurate engine bits here. So we'll get that all plotted and figured out. Uh, a very small pressurized tank uh, attached to it will pressurize the fuel as it is being fed into the engine. And uh, I just want to make sure that I can get those to the appropriate tank type, make sure everything there is appropriate, and the fuel is locked so we're not bleeding fuel from uh, our ascent stage, which is going to have relatively tight margins uh, comparatively. And then we'll just uh, use some strap-on non-pressurized tanks here. These will feed into the pressurized tank, where the fuel will be pressurized and then forced out the engine. Uh, and wow, that is a lot of Delta V. That is. A lot more than I think we actually need to get down to the surface of the moon, but that's fine. If we have to take off on our descent stage, hopefully we'll still have at least one ignition remaining in there. We might actually have two uh, if we can do a single burn uh, descent, which I have done before. And we'll just, uh, yeah, that little cube is there to make it look better. It doesn't actually do anything. All right, uh, we'll paint those Atlas colors because I do kind of like simple, simple colors. Anyway, and uh, we will be using a uh, oh a hose transfer for KAS just in case we need to move some fuel from this into the lander or vice versa or life support supplies or anything like that. Uh, basically, the goal is is we'll put the lab down on the surface of the moon. We'll put a supply pod down very close to it on the surface of the moon, and then we'll land the crew. The crew will connect all three vessels together, and uh, hopefully stay on point for about a year or so. Um, and collect lots and lots of neat science data and pr make this uh, proof as proof of concept that we can do this on Mars also, provided, of course, we're able to nail the landings. That's really the hardest part. So we'll give this independent comms. We've got the ladder situation all figured out. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not that bad. And it packs up uh, pretty nicely, I have to say. That's none too shabby. I mean, it's not gorgeous, but... It certainly could be worse. So we'll just uh, make sure we've got some lights on it and some struts just to make sure this thing doesn't wobble itself apart on descent or when it's trying to 
do any of the things that it needs to do. Fair enough. Now we just need to reroute it to the engine so that we can just uh, drop it into a um, DN 5B Artemis setup. Uh, we're probably going to have to update the launcher. This is 23 some odd tons, which I, I think is actually the heaviest uh, lunar lander that we've used um, ever, but not really surprised. I, I think we've got the Delta V to deal with it. So this is our original uh, DN 5B Artemis setup. Uh, this is what we use to launch our crew on their way to Mars, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and update it now that we've got some better engines. Uh, namely, the RS-25 as a replacement for the HG-3 and the uh, RD-171s as replacement for those clusters of E-1s. But uh, size is a bit of an issue. The, the RD-171s are a lot bigger than a single E-1, but uh, so we can't quite fit two on these boosters as they sit. But you know what? I think we might be able to get a little creative here. If we just tip these off to the side and then... Uh, Maybe bolt some E1s on near them. Make sure they're E1As because we want that extra thrust. We uh, also want our turbo pump uh, dump tube off to the side so we're not burning anything up. Now this actually gives us a uh, comparable thrust but a little bit higher ISP um, than the old setup and it's a lot cheaper and uh, a lot easier to produce. These has it we're at, and of course there's the part count savings. Um, yeah, something about tonnage. So I think we'll upgrade the computer core. We'll probably upgrade the fairing, and we're gonna upgrade that tank, uh, the core stage tank, uh, entirely also. So there's that, and I think uh, yeah, there's our upper stage. Let's get some of our staging things figured out. Just make sure all that's okay. All right, we'll move all those down to a stage so we can calculate our uh, delta V for fuels and such uh, more appropriately. We should probably get this thing sized. There we go. And again, double check our staging. And so now we're going to get four RS-25 engines bolted to the core stage, and that does provide considerably more thrust than the five HG3 engines that they are replacing. We could actually probably do three RS25s to see a similar thrust number, but I would like uh, a little bit more lift capacity as far as tonnage to orbit. But uh, of course, it does mean that we're going to have to size up our core stage fairly considerably, although we should probably switch MechGem to Earth now so that we can kind of figure out what we're doing. So we'll size up our core stage tank uh, get a little bit more runtime out of these engines. Of course, they're going to suck down way more fuel than the uh, five HG3s that they are replacing, but they also are going to produce a lot more thrust. So, no real problems there. We can just size up the tank, make sure that these are pointed at the ground. You know, that doesn't look half bad, really. I think we can get a little more size out of it just so we can increase our runtime and make sure we're making an independent save out of it. Yeah, let's uh, bring this down and have a look here. Yep, there's our Mars Hab module thing. So we'll just jump back to sub-assemblies, bring out our Mark 11 lunar lander. Yeah, we're going to have to size that up a little bit, but all in all, it fits. That's not too bad. I think we can deal with this. Um, I think that's actually probably about the fairing size that we had for the last time we took an Artemis vehicle uh, out to the moon. So... Uh, it, it's not a huge stretch, and of course, if we can just get a little bit more lift capacity out of this thing, I think uh, we can build a much better hab for the next time we send a crew to Mars, make them uh, a little bit happier, and maybe not have so tight of a fuel or life support margins. Also, we're going to switch out this J2 for an HG3, and uh, really the big limitation here is that we're going down from three ignitions to two ignitions, although we are getting higher ISP and much more thrust, so we can... Uh, I'm just going to double check all my fuels and make sure everything there looks good. The Delta V on that does in fact look good. I'm um, hoping we won't have to burn more than a kilometer per second or so out of our upper stage uh, before we achieve orbit, but uh, those are Mars kind of margins. Right now we only need lunar kind of margins, so if we have to make further adjustments to that upper stage uh, or even to our launch stage to make sure we can get it there, and certainly to the boosters we will. That's why we're doing this. It's kind of a testing ground for bringing heavier stuff to Mars. 
without having to use uh, our 500 ton to orbit launcher, which I still haven't quite figured out how to make not explode. So anyway, we're going to get this out on the launch pad and run ourselves uh, a little bit of a simulation. So I will turn you over to old me for a little bit of live commentary. Well, that's the best way to start any test flight. So uh, we're going to move our main engines down to below the launch clamps. Uh, that should be booster sep, that should be tower sep, that's stage sep. That's useless. Wrong engine. Where's my HD3? There it is. Uh, I can't really create a stage for that. I can't? No. Okay, then. Um... Do we'll just uh, move it down here. All right, that should be all we really need to test. SAS is on. Throttle is set to full. Ignition sequence start. Let's see how these uh, unequal boosters do. We are lit. Wait for those RS-25s to spool up, and it looks like we're going. Hooray! Kind of a little slower, I guess, but uh, is to be expected. We'll just... Uh, I will be monitoring the boosters for uh, fuel rate and consumption. Since they are mixed engine and they take different fuel rates, it's not going to drain perfectly. But uh, the closer we can get to a perfect burn on it, the better off we will be. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad, I guess. And uh, maybe we'll be able to compensate for it later. But basically, uh, the big part is we need to make sure that we've still got about uh, three kilometers per second left left in our HD3 S4B stage for transfer to the moon and then uh, these guys will be all set we can go ahead and get this thing uh, in the build and of course we'll launch it after we have the research station on the ground no point in getting a crew ready for a thing that uh, isn't planted yet we need that mission to go well first before we can worry about this one but might as well get the build going something like that. Alright, so uh, I'm going to start pitching into this gravity turn and try to do it as efficiently as I can. Uh, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Anyway, I'll pick you guys up in orbit. Yeah, all in all, a fairly smooth launch, although I don't think I was quite as efficient as I could have been, but, you know, what else is new? Um, the booster fuel consumption rate was really the uh, what was keeping most of my attention. Uh, and causing me not to uh, pitch into this nearly as much as I should have. But uh, it looks like through that core stage, it's almost even. We're just getting a, a little bit extra liquid oxygen there uh, down at the bottom. But yeah, I could have been a whole lot lower here. But uh, that's the, the part that, that really piqued my interest in seeking to optimize these uh, boosters for later is uh, definitely going to give us the largest gains because any fuel left unspent is not only dead weight that we carried but uh, energy that we could have made so yeah this entire bottom tank could have been kerosene and we would have been just fine but boosters are clean in a way we are down to just our RS 25s now and providing a uh, very respectable thrust to weight ratio uh, I had not throttled anything down I know that the E1s don't throttle but the RS 25s and the RD 171s do uh, deep throttle so we actually could have prolonged that burn and kept a little bit of an angle and I think it would have benefited us as far as uh, getting this thing to orbit now the uh, launch escape system was jettisoned just uh, a few seconds ago really that does save us uh, a little bit of tonnage not a, not a whole hell of a lot but Mechjev never really quite gives you accurate numbers as far as uh, how much delta V you really have until after the boosters come off and then it suddenly realizes that the boosters are not going to be there for <laughs> the second half of this core stage is burned so you're going to get a lot more delta V than what it's predicting although I still think we're shy by a comfortable margin of maybe one to two hundred meters per second which uh, I really think that we can uh, scrape together once we optimize those boosters and kind of start to get some of those problems figured out but um, it's also kind of nice to think that I can do most of the missions that I think I want to do just by updating this DN5 series and not having to result to an insanely expensive uh, booster stack. 
There goes our core stack, uh, separated in a way, and a good light on the HG3. Now, this is the part where I really could have been leaning on the RCS thrusters a little bit on the uh, S4B stage to kind of give us a, a few extra meters per second just to kind of, I don't know, tweak in a little bit more of that efficiency. Uh, maybe make up for some of the lack of delta V that we got from the core stage. That would have been nice. Now, I thought I had locked all the fuels up there, but apparently I'm wrong. We're still going to be uh, using uh, thruster fuel from our command pod. But anyway, we're coming up on orbit, so I'm going to turn you over to old me. Okay, 251 by 152 with uh, 3,246 meters per second left in the tank. Um, I mean, that's kind of right on the margin a little bit, but uh, I could have laid on these RCS thrusters a little bit more to uh, help that along just a little bit. But I... Um, I guess we're going to run with it. Uh, I, I'm probably going to go back and tweak the booster settings a little bit, or at least the fuel in the boosters just a little bit, see if I can't get rid of some of that uh, unburnt liquid oxygen and uh, get a little more kerosene in there, or maybe just adjust the ratio uh, on one of those a little bit. So hopefully we get a, a more even burn. Um, but yeah, I think we're I think we're all set to start setting up this uh, research outpost uh, on the moon. We've got our crew vehicle ready to go most part let's just uh make sure nothing blew up okay good it's still in there and it's still intact and there's a shroud over the engine even we even had avionics all the way up how cool is that uh, yeah this is a, an older s4b stage i think the later ones were a little wider and a little shorter but not that it matters too much uh that engine did get moved or this tank maybe got moved something there is just uh not quite right but anyway these are all very small, inconsequential details that uh, I will get into and deal with. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. We are all set for this uh, this mission, I should say. So I'll make some tweaks. We'll get this into the assembly line, and hopefully we'll be underway very soon. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then... See you later.